so welcome to another uh, metagame showdown. Um, this time it's standard, and we're bringing Mono Blue uh, Tempo to the party. I'm not sure what uh, Lucas's standard deck is, but I suppose we'll find out. I've played a couple matches with this now. Um, not like a ton, but it's a strategy that I'm well familiar with, and um, let's be honest, it's not that difficult of a deck to play. This is an interesting keep mold decision, though. I think this is a decision that's much easier to make game two and three. If I need to go faster, it's an easy mole. If I need to go s slower, it's an easy keep. I think we're going to mulligan it, though. Okay. A slightly more agnostic interaction, but also a slightly more awkward draw, but I think it's a fine keep. Let's discard this terror. All right. Uh, so I'm going to be playing Grixis, uh, good stuff. The idea is just cast Invoke Despair a bunch of times, play a bunch of good cards. And if I had to guess what Dan's going to be on, I'm guessing it's going to be Mono Blue. All right, so looking at the hand, this is kind of a uh, snap keep in most scenarios. We've got some good creatures, we've got some, or we've got a lot of early plays. Um, I am fine keeping this. It kind of sucks that we have Sheevan Reef. The thing that I like about this hand is I want to get Blood Tithe Harvester, another blood token, so that we can kill Tempest Gin if it does end up being a blue deck. I know he's been playing that a lot. Um, it could be anything, though. I know he's built a couple standard decks, so right now we're kind of going in blind. All right. Is this... Grixis, great. Okay. I'm not exactly sure what the Grixis matchup is for Mono Blue. Um, what the win rate is. It's probably not very really good. I think we're gonna make this a bad. Okay. I don't hate my position. We're gonna Thirst next turn, draw a bunch of cards, hopefully draw some protection for the Jin or a land. So... Here, I think the play is likely to just be playing out Phyrexian Flesh Gorger. It gives us a life linker, and it lets us sort of race back if he lands a Tempest Gin next turn. The other option is we could not play a... Oh, we could play Tenacious Underdog and have him try and protect the Gin next turn. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to play Tenacious Underdog. We're going to hold up Cut Down. This is a really face-up cut down, and any spell that he has is gonna... Alright, yeah, nope. Well, now cut down is a dead card. Unless he plays out a Delver. But Mono Blue doesn't usually run Delver. Most of the pro players have been cutting it from their lists because it's not really impactful enough, and it dilutes the main game plan, which is basically a Protect the Queen style around... Tempest Gin and Tolarian Terror. In fact, some people are even going down to lower and lower Tolarian Terrors and just relying on Impulse to be able to um, fill in the gaps. This is always a tough decision. He could be trying to think about a way of pumping the Gin. He may be missing lands. So the question is, do I discard the Tolarian Terror, which I think is good later in this matchup? Hard to remove... Um, trades with the Shelly. Or do I ditch it because it's going to be too hard to cast? I think I ditch it and maybe one make disappear. I think this totally tells him that I have another one in hand, but I think it's fine. All right, there we go. He's ditching a Talarian Terror and a make disappear. Wow. Okay, so he has tons of creatures here. Yeah, here's the... F yeah. I think I let this resolve and then just fade him with the token. I'm still not totally sure how to deal with a fable. I do get a scry out of this though. Bottom. Get in there. Oh, he is running Delver. Um, okay. If that's the case, I definitely want to get rid of Dracula, and Bankbuster's a little bit slow here. 
want to draw some lands. God damn, that is not a good. Does he love his Delver? If he removes the Delver, I think I'm okay with that. Yeah, he can have that. Um, and then we'll fight it on, fight for the Haughty Gen on his turn, and see how it goes. Now he needs a protection spell. If it's a um, phase out spell, then he will. Oh, well, he's got a counter. That's the technical right thing to do there. You want to waste my mana, so you wait till my upkeep. We still have some outs, so if we draw a land, we can earth eye. Hmm. Main phasing this to get an extra point of damage on the gin. And then now we just slam it. We're going to hope for the best. Oh, you hate to see that. Okay. Yep. Okay, he's kind of got this attack right here. Um, this. He seemed to be pretty mana screwed this game. I'm not sure how many lands the Grixis deck runs. Alright, that was a good game one. I'm a little worried about game two and three, though. I'm wondering if this needle is good just for a possible sideboard lily. Probably not, though. Could be good against Fable, too, once it's flipped. But I think we're going to try to win the game before it flips. I'm wondering about this Essence Capture. It's a creature-heavy deck. It doesn't counter Fable, but I think that's okay. So let's get Essence Capture. I'm not in love with Impulse. Um, Spectral Adversary for the tech. Not against it. I like cutting one spell pierce. Might cut the second. It's a question whether or not Delver is actually good here too. Spicy cut a land on the draw. Do I do I dare? Nah. Let's cut another spell pierce. Try like that. So against Mono Blue, we want as much interaction as possible, and we want to be able to counter the things that are important. As much interaction as possible does not necessarily mean cut down, unfortunately, um, because it doesn't hit their uh, gins. Some nice spells, burn down the house isn't terrible. I definitely don't want cut downs. I'm not crazy about Bank Buster. I'm not crazy about Research Desk. Because none of those really get uh, what I need. Fine with Ronas Vortex. I'm fine with uh, Burn Down the House. Like I said, Soul Transfer is a good card. Or Ty's a great card this year. Um, I think I'll put in a Hearse. I think it's worth a try to put in a Hearse. I think that's a good card. Brotherhood's End doesn't do anything. Lilian is a, a very good card here. Wish I had more. Better than Soren. So what do I take out here is the question. Because I like a lot of the cards that I have. Probably a Corpse Appraiser. They don't have very many. Um, it's probably both Corpse Appraisers, actually, because they don't have very many uh, things that I can get with it. And if that's the case, then what do I take? In exchange. It's not going to be negate because I can't really fight their counter spells too much. I just kind of have to run into it. Disdainful Stroke is an answer for Talarian Terror. You know what? Let's go all in on the Hearse plan. Let's go all in on the Hearse plan. If I hit the unlicensed Hearse, start, uh, start digging through their graveyard, their gins aren't going to do very much. Um, and I can land it on turn two or as early as turn two. Lucas taken a long time to board, which is interesting to me. I, he's typically more up to date with um, metagame strategies, and this is a pretty popular metagame matchup in standard. And so I would think his sideboard strategies a bit better known, but maybe not. I 
think this is a snap keep. Interesting. It's not the best draw keep. Um, but if I can get out ahead with these Delvers. Uh, that was a one lander. We can't keep it. This is fine. This is a great hand. It's a great ish hand. Um, it would be nice if we had something to play on. Uh, if we were able to play our spells out, but I'm fine with keeping this. We definitely ditch the underdog because we want to keep both of the interaction pieces and we can play the Flesh Gorger to um, race a little bit. And we also can't play the underdog on two, so I'm not super excited about the card again. Catland? I say let's get it. Make him cut down the Delver, then play Delver number two with the slip out on unlock. He has the Delver. So, if Delver flips, it might literally just be worth it to bounce. Yeah, because this is going to eat his uh, counter spell if he chooses to counter it. Then we get to get down our Flesh Gorger. Okay. Ooh, do I play the second Delver? Fuck it. Just maximum pressure. Okay, this card's good here. Oh, you lucky dog. Love to see that. I don't currently have a way of dealing with this, which isn't good, but I think we could easily raise. So let's have him tap out for the thirst. Or counter it on his upkeep. Mm, bottom this, just not there yet. Yeah, we're going to make him do it on his upkeep. We can pay for the make disappear. And if he goes for, like, uh, some other spell. Sure. <laughs> Another Delver. <laughs> I would have loved to draw land there, but... Another Delver isn't god-awful. Resolve. Oh, that's a that's an okay draw. Um, we don't need to burn down the houses because he's only going to tap out for the. He's only going to tap out once, if anything. Hmm. That's fine though. I'll just pass. I'm kind of interested in ambushing with the Spectral Adversary. Or like doing something with it. And get in. We'll see what he does. Um, we're going to go with the Flesh Gorger here. Um, because we can pay for Make Disappear. I'm fine if he sacks something to try and get rid of it. Um, if he wants to counter it, he won't be able to play his Thirst for Discovery. Two seems tough to deal with. Let's this game has become a bit more interesting. Yeah, see, he's countering it because he can't take the uh, life game. But that's totally fine. Because now we get to... Uh, we still have one on the board. We're raising him, and now he doesn't have that counter. He's missing his thirst for discovery. We're in an okay spot here. What we don't want to see is a... In. I'm still curious if I snap this adversary in. I don't think so. Essence capture. Interesting. Let's get in. It 
it was definitely in consideration to hold up capture there with the special adversary backup. But I figured with one card in hand, having exactly a creature that I'm worried about is probably unlikely. I'm more worried about either card advantage or removal, so this essence capture isn't super valuable on this turn. Yeah, that's exactly what we didn't want to see. Okay. So here... He definitely has some sort of interaction here. If it's a slip out the back, then it's right to just burn down the house, right? If it's a counter, doesn't matter one way or the other. If it's a bounce spell, we don't want to do that. Right. Okay, so let's just swing with the Flesh Forger, and then we'll get the hasty devils after the fact. That resolved way too quickly, which means it is very likely a counter. That's fine. What? He had nothing? Alright, let's calculate a bit. So it's lethal if I swing out. It's not lethal if I swing out, phase out the... So the line would be swing out, deal six. He's down to eight. He swings out. I have to take three. I'm down to three. He's at 11. I flash in the special adversary. Pumped. To phase out the Evangel, I'd be taking an additional three. I could block. I take two. I'm down to one. I swing back for... I swing back for nine, and it's not enough. I can't pump twice, right? No. Is he going to go for the cheeky... Uh three more damage out of out of his gin. I don't think that's going to save him here. He needs to draw. Hmm. Maybe the higher upside thing was just to cast it beforehand. Is it but the problem is if it was a bounce spell, I would have regretted that so much. And that's the reason why like that's the reason why I just swung with the flesh forger. He's thinking pretty hard, so I'm guessing he's going to thirst for discovery, try and find a solution to what's going on here. What he should be looking for are Talarian Terrors, and he should not have attacked with the Delver last turn. He should just be keeping people back to block the Flesh Forger. I guess no attacks. I'm in a bit of a tough spot here. Uh, that doesn't do it. Um, I think we swing out here. He either double blocks the Flesh Gorger, um, or he can block Evangel of Synthesis and a Devil, which neither of those things are okay. Let's see what he does, and let's see if this is lethal. Oh, maybe I should have flashed in the Special Adversary first. I guess I could have traded with the Evangel, but maybe I don't care? Okay, I want to see what happens here. Spectral Adversary can phase out Synthesis, and that's it. So he's still taking three, so we're still swinging for another three next turn. Do I phase out the Delver and save it, and then risk dying to a card draw spell, or do I phase out the Evangel 
and definitely not die but lose the Delver. Let's not die. Um, his clock, if he gets plus three, plus O oh, next turn. Oh, hold on. How big is his? Yeah, it's still going to be. His clock is still going to be um, too slow for this. Because he'll deal 11 damage next turn. I'll be down to three. Then I'll swing out with the Devils. He really has no way of stopping it without taking any damage. Oh, and I won't be down to three. I'll be down to six. It's maybe not right. But I lose to, like, literally consider. Okay. I think we're just going to hold everything back here. Capture with Thirst backup is a good way to get me back in the game. Wait, am I just dead? No. I'm dead to removal, but I have a thirst to dig for a counter spell if I need it. Oh, you hate to see a land there. Okay. Um I don't want to I don't want him to see another card because he could find an answer to this. Okay. Let's see if he can. That is game. Oh wait. Oh fuck. <laughs> I didn't know the devil's pink face. Um Let's just thirst to see what's in here, if it, anything can save me. Three lands in a row. Alright, well, that'll answer that question. We had a, um, or tied a counter, whatever he did. So, uh, it, it made more sense to counter the, um, whatever he was doing to try and save it than to counter him digging for it. Because he still has four mana and he still had a card in hand. So, whatever he ended up choosing to do... Um, whatever he ended up choosing to do to try and stop him if he had some sort of counter target ability or something. Uh, I don't. I, I think there's one spell like that in standard right now. Um, he may have found something, we could have countered it, uh, as long as he didn't find two things. I wonder what the correct play pattern there would have been. I wonder if there was a win in that game. There probably was. Not sure. Okay, it seems like he boarded out a decent number of creatures here. Or he just got a strange control draw. I'm gonna say he boarded more into a control deck with Phyrexian Flesh Gorger as the main plan. What am I gonna do against that? This Essence Capture kinda sucked all game, so maybe bring in the Spell Pierces, take out at least one of the Essence Captures. I feel like Impulse might have been okay there too. Disdainful Stroke might be okay also. Let's cut one Delver. I don't know. I think he's going to be boarding in a lot of removal. And... I don't know if I want to get my hand mucked up early game by, like, trying to protect a Delver. Uh, I like the board. board. Burn Down the House did do some work there. And he did let us get to the mana. We did try and, like, waste some of his early stuff. Um, let me see if there's anything that I would have liked to have. Mishra's research desk would have been nice. Um, yeah. Maybe that's just better than the second hearse. Because we don't ever want to draw two hearses. No. I, I, I think we keep in the hearse. I, I think that's a good idea. And I think it'll I think it'll play well. Funnily enough, this might be a keep. And I think it might be a keep just because we have interaction. Maybe Fading Hope is a better cut here. I think this has to be a mole. This is, I guess, a keep. Do I keep the island or uh, the third make disappear? Probably ditch it. Probably ditch the make, the make disappear. Or no. Now I don't know. 
Yeah, maybe we'll just keep the third one. I don't know. Seems more fun that way. Go ahead. These two are, are bound to eat counters, which is exactly what we want, but we're really looking to just slam them with the slam them with the interaction. Um, yeah, okay. Let's make him scared. He doesn't know what's in our deck. He doesn't know that we don't have any counter spells. Sure. That's the argument for keeping the third land instead of the third make disappear, but I mean, if we just stay alive with the make disappears, we'll get to this haughty gen eventually. I'm hoping to keep a lot of removal just dead in his hand right now. Uh, you can counter this if you want. Thank God. What? Why? I, I don't. So, I guess it is really like a deck where you just counter everything, right? So I'm fine if he counters every single shield that I cast because I'm just gonna cast, I guess, four of them in a row because I'm gonna rip the other one off the top right here. Jack, Jack, do it again. It's not a good spot for me on a mole on the play, not providing that much pressure. Ooh. Is there any advantage to make this uh, to fading hope this rather than countering it? Next one we want to land, so right now he's considering whether or not he make disappears this. He's thinking, oh, maybe I'll be able to race it, and I need to start countering things that, yeah. So this is a reason why. Well, the auto tapper just showed that we have Ronas Vortex in our hand. I'm still like super dead to removal, which is not a good spot to be in. I guess I could fading hope my own haughty gen. That's probably good. Is this a removal spell on my upkeep? Yeah. Now we have two removal spells in order to uh, get at him. So let's do it on his upkeep. That's optimal. Or if he taps out here. Vortex. So. The question is, we're going to play, is this tech? Do I spell pierce the Rona's Vortex, make him pay for it, and then Fading Hope? It is two for winning myself, but it prevents him from doing anything else this turn. The alt is just Fading Hope and fizzle the Rona's Vortex. I mean, that's probably correct. I'm glad I kept that hand. It had two must counter spells and a removal spell. This is exactly what we wanted to do. Now he's trying to think, oh, well, how am I going to uh, protect this gin? Do I protect it now? Do I phase it out? Oh, he's going to fading hope his own gin. That's fine. Now here's the question. Does he play the gin out? I guess I still have the backup of if this is an Infernal Grasp, I can still Scout Pierce it, which is good. I'll keep it safe. I don't know. Seems fine. Um, I guess the downside of that is now if he has any removal spell, I'm fucked. Let's just pass. Maybe that didn't make any sense. I probably shouldn't have kept the Consider on top. Okay, that was probably a misplay. We could slam the Shieldred, but I think we make him do his stuff. Another Fading Hope? It's kind of funny. Nah. Ooh. I'm going to hide the Terror. So that way, he doesn't get the discount on any of the spell on any of the counter spells or protection that he has. It it's nicer. I would have liked to use the. Um, I would have preferred using the infernal grasp there, but it doesn't really matter that much. Um, Tolarian terror is probably a worse card for him. 
phenomenal top deck. This deck is insane. The uh, just the level of top decks that you can have. He can't even counter it. Because if he make disappear Saxes to Larian Terror, well, he can't even make disappear it. Lily, it's a tough one. Let's be honest with ourselves here. Does Ward? Yeah, okay. And I can pay for... A fight? I can pay and for his ward win? if he goes to... Uh, okay, that's reasonable. Yeah, you're allowed to do that. Ah, oh, I've always hated crowns. Um... Yeah, let's slam Shieldry. God damn. The third Shelly's pretty tough. I'm not, I won't lie about that one. Yeah, thanks, Lucas. Ah, I'm tilted about this. I feel like I should have won this match. I think I had chances um, in games two and three, but... Yeah, I think there's too much I need to draw, plus Shelly's out. It just takes the game if I do need to draw out of it. Yeah. Ah, it's frustrating. Yeah. I'll hit him with the love. Because we, we love our friends here. We're all, we're all good friends, and you see a pair of goblins. Uh, I think that he had me in the first game, uh, like, had the nuts in the first game. I think he had a shot in the uh, second game, but the third game it was just too many plus counter spells. I had a dubious keep in game three, but I think I had to keep it. Well, it was a mold of six. I don't think the seven card hand was a winning hand. Not sure. <laughs> 